Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about the SIM use case, how to write use cases, what is the best way to create a use cases in the SIM and what is the thin line difference between the correlation and aggregation. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, do check my LinkedIn profile. If you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. See, before we are going to discuss about how to how to write use cases and all that, first we need to understand how the SIM work. What is the need of SIM? There's a dedicated video I made on SIM. So in the description box of this video, you can check the intro video. But just for your visibility and all that, let me explain again why we need a SIM. See, what happened is uh, when you're talking about your traditional network infrastructure, suppose this is the firewall we have. Okay, it is basically connected with the switch. Okay, so we have a system A, we have a system B, we have a system C. Okay, so now what happened is uh, there is a IP which is called as a 1.1.1.1. It was able to bypass the firewall. So firewall generate the lock, then it went to system A, it generate a lock, it went to B, it generate a lock, it went to C, it generate a lock. Okay. Now, as an investigator, I need to go to each and every system to collect the log and correlate, which is a problematic task. That's why what happened is we introduced the concept of the uh, we introduced the concept of log management system. So this is basically called as a log management system. So now what happened? Any activity happen on the firewall? Any activity happen on the A, B, and C? They don't store the logs. They basically pull the log to log server. But problem with the log server is manually we need to review and correlate the log, which is always a tough cho cho choice. So what I need, I want automation, I want a correlations, I want this everything need to be orchestrated automatically. And this is basically where we use SIM. So log management plus data analytics plus automation. Okay, that is basically the combination called as a SIM. So now we have a SIM. So in the SIM, what happened? Any activity happened the firewall, any activity happened the B, C, D, all information is basically go to the SIM. SIM will collect the log, correlate the log, generate the event, and that event will be notified by, to the administrator and according to that, he will confirm is it an incident or not. So event is always generated by the tool. It is an incident discovered by the human. Okay, so SIM play a crucial role in safeguarding your, your informations. Okay, it providing a real-time analysis. Okay. And but the question is, what is the event we need to we need to generate? What is the notification we need to give to the administrator? So proactively he can work on that. And that is why in the SIM we're creating a use cases. If this this, this happen, this should be the activation. If this happen, this should be the activation. So that is called as a use case. So developing a use case and correlation rule is a pivotal in enhancing the efficiency and effectiveness of the SIM system. So here we have a two objective. The primary is to create and implement the use case that address the specific security concerns within the organization. And secondary is basically develop the correlation rule that enable the SIM to detect and respond to the identified security threats or events. So to understand that in more detail, we have a case study. So let's understand by the help of case study. So financial institution is there, which is called a aspirant bank. They want to safeguard the IT infrastructure. Okay. They want to safeguard the IT infrastructure from the potential cyber threats. So that is basically the goal they have. Okay. Now in this scenario, and they have a threat called unauthorized access, data breach, and other malicious activity. So this is the concern. So challenge is basically here is, we have a two challenge. One is lack of comprehensive use cases because based on a use case only we create. So company did not have a comprehensive, uh, you can say, uh, set of use cases for the SIM system and this made it difficult to identify the security threats that need to be addressed and second is they don't have a ineffective correlation rules so by this they can able to correlate the event and everything okay so that is basically the concern we have so to overcome that we understood very well that okay we have a uh, you know two main major objectives here so let me explain you that objectives also so you get a better visibility 
Objective is to create and implement use case that address specific security concern within the organization. Second is develop the correlation rule that enable the SIEM system to detect and respond to the security threats. So before we understand about this use case, let's understand the basics of correlation and aggregation. See, when you go by the correlation, correlation basically is, is basically a process which is referred to linking a related records and identify the pattern that might suggest a security threat. Okay, so example like we have a firewall. Okay, we have a switch here. We have a system A, we have a system B, and we have a system C. Okay, so there is an IP called 1.1.1.1. So it bypassed the firewall, it went to A, it went to B, it went to C. Okay, so we have collected the information from all the sources. So that is called collection. Then we aggregate, that is called aggregation. But to link that aggregate information, we have a correlation. So correlation refer to linking or related records, identify the pattern. So here linking record mean we need to identify the information related to the 1.1. .1. So we identify this information on the firewall at 10.40 p.m. 10.41 we identify in the system A. 10.42 we identify in the system B. 10.43 we identify in system 3. So this is basically called as a correlation. But how to identify this correlation? So we have a multiple techniques. So first is by the pattern recognition where we identify the pattern of event that might indicate the cybersecurity threat. Example, multiple fail login attempts, which is followed by the successful login. That is called pattern recognition. Okay, that is the one. Second is basically called as a rule base. We can utilize the predefined rule and criteria to identify and correlate the related events. And third is basically alert. If it's matched, it generates alert for a security team when correlate event that matches the threat indicator is identified. So example, if you use a login in system from a different geographical location, simultaneously correlation rule can flag this impossible travel, indicating a potential security incident. So that is how we have a correlation. On the other side, aggregation is basically referred to collection console data from a various source to minimize the volume and simplify the analysis. So here we consolidate the data, we combine the log and event data from a various source into the unified format because what happen is system a suppose is windows a is window okay b is basically called as a linux system so linux generating a different way to generate a log window generating in a different logs their state of format is different okay so we consolidated the log we normalize the log we reduce the volume we are reducing the volume of log data by consolidating similar or repeated data and normalization is basically we converting a data into common state. As I said, window generating a log in a different format, Linux generating a log in a different format. So it is a role of our aggregation to convert the data in a common format. So aggregated all fail login attempt across the various platform service to analyze and report the overall security posture regarding an authentication attempt. And then on that, we basically apply the correlation. Okay, so that is the parameter we have. So to understand more in detail, correlation is all about linking related events and identifying patterns that suggest the potential security threat, focus on understanding and identifying complex incident. And aggregation is all about collecting and consolidating data to manage it effectively and ensure the analysis is sufficient and manageable and focusing on data management and simplification. So first we aggregate and then we correlate. Okay. So that is the example we have. So let's understand with the case study how to create a use cases so you get a better visibility. So when you're talking about the case study, we have a, some actions planned. First, we need to identify and create the use case. Second is we need to develop the correlation rules. Then we basically implement and test. Then we have an instant response and then we have a continuous monitoring and improvement. Okay, I, re I repeat again, in order to create a use cases and all that, the first step is identify and create a use cases. The second step is called develop the correlation rule so that you can able to avoid the duplications. Then we implement and test that rule. Then we, based on that, we discover the incident, we respond to the incident. And based on that, we improve the overall program, which is done through the help of continuous monitoring and improvement. So that's something is basically we're going to perform. Okay, so we have a first use case, unauthorized access detection. So that is basically my goal. Okay, I want to detect the unauthorized access. So objective is to identify and alert any unauthorized access to sensitive information. Fine. So what is the metrics we are setting is data required is user login data, access logs, system event logs. Okay. 
So trigger is basically multiple failed login attempts, access from the unusual locations, access during a non-business hour. So that is something is a use case we have set. What my goal is, I want another access detection. Okay, someone tried to access my server and all that, or, or someone tried to modify the system logs and all that, I want an alert. So trigger, we have a multiple failed login attempts. So sometimes what happened, user enter wrong password. So here what we do is we set the threshold. If user enter two time wrong password, it is okay. But if if the logs, if the user entering more than three time, four time, then start generating a log. So that is basically the anomaly pattern. Or from an unknown location they try to access, which is not part of the IP. So this is the trigger we have. Okay, so this is the use case we have created. Okay, and the objective of this use case is to identify alert the unauthorized access. Okay, so we have another use case, which is called data exfiltration. It means data should not leave within the organization or data should not leave outside of the organization. Okay, I'm talking about inbound to outbound, outbound. So objective is detect the potential data exfiltration from internal to external. So data is basically any kind of network traffic data we have, data transfer logs we have, user activity logs we have. So for that we set the triggers. Triggers can be your unusual data transfer size. So example, if someone is trying to send, um, you know, more than 5 MB data, okay, it, it should, SIM should generate a log. So unusual data transfer size of destination or especially during off hours. So that is a trigger we have. So that is a first step is we create a use case based on this particular use case. We basically develop the correlation rule. We already discussed correlation mean, right? Correlation mean aggregate the data, connect the match and trigger. So correlation rule is the second thing which we done based on a use cases. So as I said, we have a use case one is unauthorized access detection. Okay, I want to detect the unauthorized access detection. For that, we set the rule. So rule is if user has more than five failed login attempt within the five minutes or access is basically uh, access is from the blacklist IP location is during a non business, then trigger an alert. So that is a condition we set. And based on this rule, if rule match, what is action? Log the account. Okay, or send the alert to the security team. So it's a combination. Instead of the action can be, you know, generate the log. Okay, so it's up to you how you want to define. Is it clear? So that's something you can do. Okay. Now on the other side, we also have another rule which is called as a uh, this one correlation rule for use to is if data transfer size is more than five MB to the external IP is going. It means if you take an example here. Uh, so we have a system A. We have a system A. If any data is basically going outside the organization, this is the organization we have data going outside the organization and data size is basically more than 5 MB. So DLP will capture and it send the logs to the SIEM. So we set this parameter. So action is temporary block the data transfer and alert the security team. Okay. So this is the correlation rule we have created. Okay. Then. So according to the use case, we set the rule. According to use case, we set the correlation rule. But for correlating, he need to aggregate the data first. Okay. So once we done with that, we have an implementation test. So first step is data collection. We need to ensure all the relevant logs and data has been feed into the SIEM. That is the first step. Second is basically rule implementation. We implement the develop correlation rule in the SIEM system. Third, sometimes we do the test before implementing in the production. So we simulate the scenario to validate if the correlation rules are triggering the desired alert and action. And if not, we can basically adjust according to the testing to make sure we can able to reduce the false positive. Once it trigger, then incident response team will take a call and according to that respond to the incident. So first step is alert review. System team will review the alert, examine the quarantine email for the malicious intent, confirm and validate. Then they notify, they inform the intended recipient about the quarantine email and provide the education on recognizing a phishing attempts or something else. Then we have an investigation where we investigate the source of the attack and all that. And finally, we basically utilize the finding to enhance the correlation rule and improve the detection capability. So whatever we have done over that, we basically do the enhancement. So we continuously monitor the alerts because companies spend 60% of the budget now on the detection solutions until unless we don't detect, we cannot able to improve. So continuously monitor the alerts, which responds in it by the SIM system. Second part is called as a feedback loop where we establish the feedback loop where the insights and learning from the incidents are used to refine the use cases. And then we need to ensure the security team is adequately trained to respond to the alert generated by the SIM system. So that is the overall process we have for the 
use cases that we create in SIM. So do let me know how do you find this video and shall I made more videos on a similar topic. And if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. Good day. Bye.